Hi, look what arrived today. It's a new swing weight machine. In today's video, I'll be comparing the readings of my Babolat RDC, the Brafiti SW1, and the Tennis Warehouse Do-It-Yourself Swing Weight Tool. All right, let's go inside. Before we get into it, it was partly my curiosity that led to the creation of this video. But I wasn't the only one. I received some comments from some of you with some common themes. One of them was asking, is there a cheaper option in a swing weight machine? And two, is there an accurate method of calculating swing weight without a swing weight machine? In this video, I'll address those themes along with satisfying mine and your curiosity. All right, now let's get into it. All right, so let me introduce the four rackets that I'll be testing in. These are all strong rackets. So I picked it out because of the uh, different lengths and different swing weights. So the first one is a Sabre, which is a 25 inch racket. I have a Prince uh, Junior racket. It's a 26, uh, Tour 26. Now the next one is a standard length racket. It's the uh, Prince Phantom 100G, it's my racket and it's customized, so it has a very high swing weight. And then the fourth racket is the Prince 03 Legacy 120, and this one comes in at 27.25 inches. First, we're gonna take a look at the readings of each of the rackets using the RDC to measure the, the swing weight. And like I've done in all of my previous videos, whenever I take swing weight on the RDC, I like to get an average uh, two or three readings to make sure it's accurate. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that on all four rackets and you'll see the uh, readings that I got so far. Next we have the Brafiti SW1 swing weight machine. Now this is a unit that I've been curious about. Uh, I've seen it on YouTube and uh, it sells for $250 and I was always curious to see if it matches up with the readings of a Babolat RDC. So when it arrived, it came with this rod which was used to calibrate the machine. But once you get it set up, all it is is right here. This uh, And all you need is your cell phone to get the uh, readings. So anyway, I reached out to Brian Fitzpatrick, the uh, inventor of this machine and he's a mechanical engineer and a recreational player. So um, yeah, thanks again, Brian, for the discount. And um, yeah, I'm really anxious to see if this is gonna match up to the Babolat RDC. So as I mentioned, I did have to calibrate this unit before I could start using it. But before that, uh, the unit comes hollow. It's, um, it has a cavity that you have to fill it up with BBs to make it, uh, to weight it down so that it's more stable. Then once you did that, uh, I did have to level the unit uh, using this uh, bar that came with it. And then once I did that, then I could calibrate it. So now that it's calibrated, I'll show you how the readings were taken. Uh, you do have to download the app. And once you get that, then you're gonna go ahead and secure the racket into the cradle. And it's similar to the Babolat RDC where you wanna position the racket perpendicular and I'm going to go ahead and take a couple of readings like I do with the RDC and you just place it into this uh, slot right here and all you're going to do is just uh, move it off to the side you're going to press measure and you just let it do its thing right there so it'll come up with a reading and you can see that's 255 and I do have to wait um, oh I'm going to stop it here and you'll notice that there's a countdown. I do have to wait, um, I think it was eight seconds before I can take another reading. So I'll go ahead and do a second one. And it's 255. So I'll put that up on my um, chart over here. And if you look at the reading from the RDC, you can see it was at 256. And then you can also compare the other ones that I took with the RDC. Uh, the Sabre was a, about three units off. It was higher actually. Uh, then my Phantom 100G 337, it matched it exactly. And the uh, 03 Legacy 120 was uh, 327. It matched it perfectly. So I'm going to go ahead and do it the uh, Tennis Warehouse. Do it yourself uh, 
Swingway Tool next. Before you get started with the Tennis Warehouse Do-It-Yourself Swingway Tool, you'll need some supplies. I have a balance board, you have a scale. Uh, it calls for two pencils, but I'm using chopsticks and they're round, so I think it's just as good. I have a book, uh, not to read, but um, it's gonna be used as weight. It called for a tape measure or yardstick, but I'm gonna be using this T-square and a stopwatch. It also calls for the edge of a table, so I'll move over on that side and I'll show you how we're gonna do this. All right, I almost forgot. I have to do three things before you can go to the edge of the table. So what I'm gonna do first is with the scale, I'll take the static weight and I'll go ahead and record that and I got uh, 281. And next we're going to take the uh, balance of the racket. And we'll go ahead and get that. Okay, I got 36.5 centimeters. And then the next thing you want to do is uh, you're going to measure the distance from the butt cap to the top cross string. And that's where the racket will be hung as it's going to be swinging. So I'm going to go ahead and use my T-square. And this will be a measurement in inches. So again, what I'm doing is measuring from the butt cap to that top um, cross string. And so it's 25 and 1 8. So that's 25.13 inches. All right, so now let's go to the edge of the table. All right, so now I'm at the edge of the table and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have these two chopsticks um, held by the uh, weight, uh, in this case this book, and I'm gonna insert the chopsticks in these two holes right here, right here and right there. Basically, uh, you wanna make sure that it's equal distance from the center. So, I mean, it could be further out as long as it's the same um, air, uh, distance. So, I already have the chopsticks in at that distance. I'm gonna make sure that the, uh, the chopstick doesn't actually touch the main string. So you wanna make sure that nothing is uh, gonna get in the way of the racket as it's swinging. So once you get it in there, you're gonna move the racket left or right from the center about one to two inches. And basically what you're gonna do is as it's swinging and it reaches the end, when it starts to go back and then come back to that starting point that's one swing so i'm gonna go ahead and push it again one to two inches and just let it swing a couple of times so i can get ready with the stopwatch and i'm sorry if there's shadows here but uh, uh yeah so i'm gonna go ahead and just uh, swing it that might be a little bit too much so i'll just let it swing a couple of times and i'll get ready with my stopwatch and one two Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, so I got thirteen point two nine. So as you can see, I took um, another reading. It came out to thirteen point three seven. I took a third one at thirteen point four three, and a fourth one at thirteen point three five. Basically, I wanted to get three that were fairly close but because that 13.43 was a little bit off I felt I uh, I took a fourth reading and that's why you see the 13.35 and so when I averaged the the three that I accepted uh, it came out to 13.35 so now that I have the numbers um, we're gonna input it into the swing weight tool okay so I'm here at the tennis warehouse University swing weight calculator so the values that I got from this uh, Legacy 120, and I did this for all the rackets, but for demonstration purposes, we're just gonna do this one racket. So in the weight, uh, we had 281 in grams. The balance was 36.5 centimeters. The uh, distance was 25.13 in inches. The time it took to swing 10 times was 13.35. So you go ahead and get swing weight here and I got 327. So let's go ahead and look at that chart again. And I already inputted the other rackets, but uh, the 327 that we just got here was across the board for all three units. So that was good. 
And then for the Prince Phantom 100G, I got the same results, 337, 337, 337. So that's cool. Uh, as far as the Tour 26 Junior though, it started off high at 256. It went down one unit on the graffiti and then it went down another uh, four units on the DIY. And then on the Sabre, uh, it started off at a 284, then it went up 287 and then down to 279. So I'm not sure what happened on these two rackets, but at least for these two rackets here on the bottom, I mean, they're spot on. So there's no reason why you can't use the uh, DIY for uh, customization. Uh, you can see that it's pretty accurate. Now, as far as the Brufiti uh, SW1, the question was, is it comparable to the Babylon RDC? And you can see that it is like pretty close in this case. Well, this is spot on, but so uh, it is a good option for $250. Uh, it's portable and all you need to power it up is your cell phone. In today's video, I was pleasantly surprised by the results of the Tennis Warehouse DIY Swingway Tool and the Brafiti SW1 swing weight machine. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching. Happy customization. And let your swings play.